Welcome back to Kitty, Creepy Kitty Creations. So today we've got an Emberly Cave Club doll to make a mini me. So I was actually really impressed considering the price of these dolls. Their joints are really, really sturdy, really good. So the reason why I chose this doll instead of Monster High is, as you can see, she's a lot shorter, and I am four foot eleven. So, um, much shorter than the average person, so I thought she'd suit me perfectly. Her hair is so cute! So, um, usually I just cut it off and put it all in the bin, but this time I think I actually want to save this hair. So, we're going to cut it off as close to the root as possible and tie it off with a headband, uh, with a hair tie after popping them all in a pile over here. So then we can use it later, maybe. So now I use some smaller scissors and cut it even closer to the scalp as I can, so that'll make it easier when pulling out the hair from the root. So I softened her head and pulled it off, which was actually quite not too bad compared to Monster High. But as you can see, the tool doesn't fit in the neck hole, so I actually had to cut the back of her head open to get all of the hair out, which was actually more difficult than Monster High, even though the cave clubs don't have any glue on them. The end of the hair has just been burnt, which is great in some regards, but I just found it really hard to get out of her head. So after I super glued her head shut, and then took off her face with acetone, now you're going to see a little bit of um, discrepancy between videos because I actually didn't do this in order. I made her wig before taking her face off, but um, this is the way I would usually do it. So, so here her face is back. <laughs> so I, I cover her hair, her head in glad wrap to protect the head while I make the wig cap. I tried something a little bit different this time with the wig cap, um, so I used the same little socklets for the cap, uh, as I always do. Yeah. Get that as tight as possible without any wrinkles, but this time I put a few other wee elastic bands close to the head because I thought this would get a nice tight fit to the scalp once the wig was done. I'll tell you right now, spoiler alert, I'll not be doing this again. Um, it was a complete total disaster. Um, but let's proceed. We <laughs> cover the, glue, the head with glue. This, I, I use fabric glue but you can use PVA glue. Um, leave it to dry. Ah! And maybe not let them fall over, make sure that they're propped up properly. So I do about three layers of that before putting on a second layer of socklet just to get a nice thick, but not too thick, wig cap. And I put on some more elastic bands to get that nice tight fit that I was wanting. Again, please don't do this yourself, it, well, it, it doesn't work very well. Um, and we'll cover it with glue again. So I did another three to four more layers. Of glue and once that's all dry I mark it around it and cut it in the shape of the, the wig cap. Um, I have a fringe so I'm actually I've already drawn that on there and now you can see why the elastic doesn't work. <laughs> it makes the wig really hard to put on. Um, it's still really hard to put on. Maybe one day I'll remake it but um, so I already prepared with, so I've got nice bright orange, sadly dyed hair. Um, so I was about to glue this to the wig, but with Mr. Step, we need to paint the wig cap first, so that if anything shows through, it's not too obvious. So we'll do that quickly now. I'm really glad I noticed before gluing any of the wefts on. 
so once the paint's dried I wanted to try gluing the hair directly to the wig which I haven't done before I tried it for just that bit at the bottom and decided I really didn't like it so I made wefts like I usually do trying to make them quite thin and just gluing them on with Elmer's glue And I cut it before doing the parting because I thought it would be easier and then once I put the glad wrap on it will, it will let the fringe lay down straight as well so we've put that down it's all sitting nice and flat I decided to cut it beforehand which in hindsight actually made it really hard to curl so I did all of the razoring, um, my hair is layered um, and then I curled it which I had to do off camera because it was so tricky it took almost two hours but it came out looking um, pretty accurate to my real hair um, I have a loose perm onto the face up, so I've already done a few, about three layers with Pan pastel, which I bought especially for this doll because my skin is five shaders, shades lighter than Emb Emberly's skin. I have very, very pale skin. Um, so usually I do the face up with the head off, but I knew that it would be prone to chipping, which it did, even though I haven't put any more layers on with the pastel. So I'm really glad that I did that then instead of putting it on after the face up because it would have been even worse. So I start drawing the eye shape using a tan colour pencil so that it will be easier to erase if I make a mistake, which I almost always do with the eyes, they always end up uneven at first. And then I draw in the main part of the eye and hopefully get them even. And now I go in with just some light blushing, first with some brown tones and then um, just the base colour for the lips. I wear quite bright red lipstick when I wear makeup so I decided to go with my favourite makeup look and go with that lip, that lip colour. And then just blushing the body and the, the head so that it's all cohesive. I think that blushing around the joints on dolls looks really, really cute. And it also it suits me as well, because especially along around the hands. I did debate doing blushing on the hands because I do actually have rheumatoid arthritis, so my joints go quite red when they're sore anyway. But then I wear compression gloves every day so I decided to go with that instead so I didn't end up needing to blush the hands. I do wear a little bit of blush when I wear makeup, so I'm replicating that 
building it up with a few layers um, just around the eyes but then I am still very pale so I needed to go back in there a little bit with Pan Pastel. I really like blush that is rather than being on the cheekbones the way that Western makeup does it I like Asian makeup in general and I think it just looks especially cute when the blush is worked into the eyeshadow and around the eyes and on the apples of the cheeks. I just think it looks really cute. So this was my first time attempting freckles, which I have quite a few of um, because of my pale skin. So I just wet this fan-like paintbrush and tab dabbed it in some pastels and see how that went. Some of the freckles were a wee bit darker than I wanted. I thought it went well for a first attempt. So just erase some of the ones that I, I didn't quite like. So this is the makeup that I wear every day. Luckily I have Prolex powder that actually matches these almost exactly so I was really happy that I'd be able to replicate this on, on my mini me. So we do a red base um, on the main eye and just slightly under. Funnily enough, this look takes me only 15 minutes to do on myself, but this face up took a really long time because I had to keep building up the colour of the Prolex powders, um, which just basically faded to nothing when I sprayed them with MSC. And I'm just adding a few more deeper freckles on my shoulders which I have a lot of. So this was just with watercolour on a wet paintbrush and then dabbing it with a rag to make them not quite so bold. Now I actually have um, two beauty marks by my lips so I added those in because they are quite prominent. And I'll darken them up later on in the face up. It's actually quite nerve-wracking doing a makeup look or a dull face that's based on yourself. I had to keep going to the mirror to look and I found that it took a lot longer than a traditional face up. So just putting in the base layer of the eyes which was really nerve-wracking for me because I have central heterochromia so the inside of my eyes around the pupil is a different colour from the outer part of my eye and the iris. The outer eye is grey whereas the inner ring by the pupil is a sort of hazily olive green which I was quite excited to do but also terrified on this smaller scale. So I, I decided to go in with grey first and then I could add in the hazel around the pupil when I go in with more detail. I started off using uh, creams and browns for the eyes because I didn't want to go in with black until the absolute last minute for when I do the eyeliner. brown worked really well for building up the outer eye. Sorry my camera keeps fuzzing in and out and changing focus found out later that it's because it's too close and there's a setting that I've got on it that um so I'll I'll do better next time
with a little bit of pastel on the eyes to try and blend it out more so you see less of the pencil marks but I, I always go in later with wet watercolor pencils so I wasn't too worried about that at this stage my main focus is building up the eyeshadow again sorry it keeps focusing on my hand Now I'm just going in there with a wet watercolour pencil with white just to bring out the white of the eyes and just adding in a few wee highlights on the eyelid. Now I use a big fluffy blush just to try and blend some of the eyeshadow. But basically just tried to copy everything that I do when I do this look on myself. Except obviously adding some more blushing on the doll, making it a bit more prominent. These are the compression gloves that I wear all the time. So I went in with acrylic paint and just did a base layer for that, which actually isn't very close to the colour. Looking at it again, it's, it was a really bad colour match, so I'll fix that up once that first layer's dried. I was going because the, the gloves are longer and they go past my wrist, but I didn't want to compromise the joint and have the paint get scraped off, so I just left them at the hand and added my black nail polish and toenail polish which I wear all the time. So I used my teeny tiniest nail brush to try and get those as small as I can. As I can. Now I'm going in with some green pastel. Looking back I don't know why I did this stage because you don't even really see any of that base layer at the end by the time I've gone over with watercolour pencil so I should maybe save myself some time next time and, and just not, not bother with that sort of base layer because I end up going over it completely and my favourite part, the eyebrows I naturally have very very thick bushy eyebrows so I decided to go in with what I like to have threaded so they're nice and thin a darkish brown which is actually my natural hair color rather than the, the bright orange but I, I, I've always wanted to be a ginger I think it's beautiful so now I'm adding some black into the corner of the eyes to do a smoky eye look and then going in with my Pearlex powder with a wet brush to try and make it more prominent but I do actually end up having to go in there quite a few times now with my own makeup I use white highlighter and white shiny eyeshadow on the inner corner of my eye because it, make, it was supposed to make you look more awake and I find that it does because I've, I've never slept very well and when I don't wear makeup, I tend to look like the grudge, <laughs> um, but whenever I wear makeup I, I look more awake, so I think this is because of this particular technique, so I wanted to replicate that on my mini me. And now I'm going in with a very sharp watercolour pencil, Faber-Castell, since it's harder, and going in and doing my winged eyeliner. And just adding in a few, make, making those wee features like the eyelid crease just a little bit darker. And then going in and swapping between black and brown. And then adding some eyelashes. Eyelash, I, I hate doing the lower lashes. They never look as nice as other doll artists. I try and do them like Jackie O or Delightful and they just never seem to turn out the same way. 
Kay's OOAK factory. She does beautiful lower lashes as goals. <laughs> so I did some of these eyes off camera and I went back in and got the gloves a more more realistic to the actual gloves off camera. And now to go in with the eyes. I use a teeny teeny tiny paintbrush that's wet and just dab colour off the pencils but sadly my camera didn't want to capture any of the tiny detail that I did and going into green around the pupil um, I quite it took a long time to get it looking the way I wanted and my stupid camera just did not want to cooperate so I'm sorry if you can't see half of it or the details not very clear I really will try and do better next time so I'm basically swapping between greens and greys with grey being on the outer part of the iris and green being on the inner part adding a bit of yellow and even um, there are a few speckles of brown so I tried to get that as close as I could to my real eye it's such a shame that none of that detail really shows on the camera. And then going in with some black pastel just to try and blend that a bit better. And then doing some highlights with a white watercolor pencil. And now to do the second eye which didn't take quite as long as the first one since I knew what I was doing now. <laughs> and just doing the same bit of black pastel and getting those matching. I really like the way um, pastels just soften the eyes. I also use some pastels to do a wee bit of shading on the whites of the eye to make them look more realistic, adding some grey and even a little bit of red. And then adding some white Prolex powder to the forehead and highlight areas. And I keep going in with more, with more Prolex powders for the eyeshadow just to keep bringing that out and making it more vibrant. So now I go in with a wet paintbrush with white watercolors and do some highlights along the waterline and in the main parts of the eyes and on the lips. The hi highlight eye highlights just bring the doll to life and everyone has their own way of doing them. Um, this is how I decided to do them this time. And she's done. Time to add on some eyelashes. I had someone ask specifically if I could show how I glue them on so I thought I'd, I'd do that in more detail this time so these ones actually stick on a little bit because of the glue that they came with ah! and try to keep them in the right place so I just put a little bit of Alma's glue on just the outer corner hold it in place and blow on it until it dries and then once it's dried I actually went in with some black paint and painted that clear strip because it looks weird on a doll if it's not black and then just keep going in small piece by small piece with the Alma's glue scraping off any excess paint and waiting for it to dry and then going back in and over the same places that have already dried and just reinforcing that and that's how you get a strong bond on the eyelashes so um, they're, they're never coming off <laughs> And it's quite helpful to be able to scrape off that excess glue so that you keep things nice and clean. The last thing you want is to um, have glue all over a face up that you've spent days on. The inner corner was the hardest. So you'll want to hold it in place and just blow on the glue to try and dry it. And again, just scraping off that excess. This, this process is actually really really time consuming it took over four hours basically to get both eyelashes done including drying time so it takes a long time but it's definitely worth it
doing more layers and reinforcing it and then scraping off the glue leaving on just the smallest sliver um, to keep the eyelashes on. Once those are dry I use Liquitex high gloss varnish on the lips and the eyes. I do two coats on the eyes and the lips just to get a nice high shine. I like the way it looks on a doll, I think that it just brings the eyes to life. It definitely makes the doll harder to photograph, but I do like the way it looks at the end. I have quite a few ear piercings, so I wanted to include those, so I just used my hand drill to poke holes through the ears and used wee little rings for my sleepers, closing that with pliers and then using just some small sewing, plain sewing needles for the studs that I have. I had been looking forward to doing um, four cartilage piercings on this left ear but sadly with my autoimmune disease they didn't want to heal after 10 months they were just as bad as when I first had them put in so I had to take them out but I did keep the third lobe piercing which I don't have on the right ear so this ear has three piercings where the right one only has two So that's how I did piercings. So for the final look I made the, this is just a top that came with, I'm not sure which doll, but I made the dungarees off camera. They're a little bit big so I might remake them at one stage but they look pretty cute and I practically live in my dungarees. I have them in so many different styles and colours, I love them. Ugh, the wig was so hard to put on there. I ended up having to do that kind of off camera And then squish it back down because it was so hard to do with all that elastic in it It just wanted it wanted to spring back I made these glasses out of wire. I did record it, but the video was getting quite long I wasn't sure if you guys would want to see that I also made this wire headband with fabric which my mum actually makes and sells She gives me a lot of them um, I'm kind of her test subject, so I included my favourite one. It's, it's the same fabric. No shoes because Creepy Kitty likes to wear, wear bare feet. <laughs> and this is the finished look. This is, this is me. I hope you enjoyed the first the mini me face up. Here are a few of the pictures. And we have a bonus video, the Creepy Kitty jumpsuit, which I just, I made a standard jumpsuit pattern with open feet and open hands and a little hood, which turned out so cute. It's got ears, um, so I wanted to make it look like my logo. I thought that could be very cool, and some of you probably know that I'm a horror writer, so cute little elf on the outside and creepy kitty on the inside <laughs> so first I wrapped it up in glad wrap like a little creepy kitty burrito so that I wouldn't get any fabric paint on the doll that I've spent weeks on <laughs> that would be just heartbreaking I wanted to do the outline of the face on the doll so that I made sure it was sitting right I just knew that if I did it off the doll, I'd end up just getting it all wrong or skew with. So that's the Creepy Kitty logo. We'll be trying to get it to look like that using a small paintbrush and some black fabric paint. It was actually really hard painting on fluffy fabric, so I had to do a few passes. So first I started with the outline, the just the smallest little dots for the eyes and the main outline of the very scary grin <laughs> so my creepy kitty logo was actually inspired by one of my horror stories which I thought maybe I'd just test to see how you guys like it and maybe read a little excerpt um, so it's from a story that I wrote about a Shinigami which is a, a god of death in Japan he works in a hospital and looks like a human. He's integrated in human life. 
but he has his main job is to ferry the, the souls of the dead and he can tell when people are about to die because of how their eyes look um, which is what I replicated in my creepy kitty logo um, I tried to do the eyes the way I described in the story so this wee little excerpt is when he's at the cancer ward or the, ch uh, the child cancer ward at the hospital he, he's a very caring Shinigami <laughs> So this is the wee excerpt here where it has the description of the eyes. One of the other children passed me a picture book, a skeletal boy with skin like old parchment. Read to us? he asked as he sat next to me, the other children inching closer to listen. I looked at the cover, glad of an excuse not to look the children in the eyes, and read the title aloud. The Legend of Momotaro, The Peach Boy. My voice was steady as I read. I made sure to give all the children different voices, anything to take their minds off what they were going through. I had to stop tears from forming every time I thought about it. That should be a redeeming quality in a Shinigami, but sadly, just makes my job that much harder. I stole a glance at Yuka, hesitating before looking up from the storybook. Her eyes were black, bottomless empty holds spidering out over her face like tendrils the only hint that they were even eyes was the tiny fleck of blindingly bright light in the center even now after eons of death duty they still unsettle me i never get used to seeing those eyes on one so young my chest felt tight and even though i could barely breathe my face remained calm as i continue reading finding small comfort in their delighted smiles and giggles at the funny voices I made for each character. A high-pitched squeaky voice for the pheasant, a deep raspy growl for the dog, and an annoying chatter for the monkey, and a courageous booming tenor for the hero Mamotaro. The image from normal person to black-eyed beast flickered like an old static-filled TV screen or a scene in a horror movie masked with strobe lights as I finally looked up from the picture book. The black eyes were always like that, never constant, always flickering. So that is what inspired these eyes for Creepy Kitty. Um, I hope you liked it, let me know if that's the sort of thing that you like, if I should include in any more videos. So the next part I did want to include in this bonus video is how I made the feet, or the slippers. So I actually needle felted three little balls for the toes and then used fluff to glue, essentially glue them to the sides of the slipper. And then cut the base out of foam and glued them to the jumpsuit fabric so this is the final base so the, the fluff goes at the bottom and I put another piece of foam for what will be going on the foot I used quick dry adhesive and fabric glue so fabric glue to put it onto the fabric and then the quick dry adhesive to glue it to the needle felting so this is what one of the finished slippers looked like. I basically just wung it the whole time, so one of, one of the feet is a bit bigger than the others. So to cover it, I just cut out a piece of fabric. I made sure to curl the ends in so that it doesn't fray. And it's basically just nipping, tucking, slip stitching, and making sure that any unfinished sewing is at the bottom of the foot because this will be glued to the sole, it won't be seen. So I basically just slip stitch all along, make little toe beans. By basically you just stitch, stitch in through here and then pull the thread tight um, and you'll get a cute little toe bean. So this one ended up a wee bit wider than the other so I just kind of squish it together and do a thread through here. Um, there's always ways to wing it <laughs> and to cover the sides I just covered that in fabric and slip stitch along the bottom where the sole's going to be. It's going to be glued on so this is what I use the quick dry adhesive for. 
I made sure to leave a wee space. Um, don't like just leave a wee space there. Don't go all the way back to give the toes some space so that they actually fit when you put them on. Now I did film slip stitching to get the toes all nice and neat but sadly it looks like that footage got lost. I made the little voodoo doll off camera and added some black stitches to just keep to that voodoo doll aesthetic. Make him look like he's just been haphazardly stitched together. And he's just made out of um, some sacking. Now here's a cool trick that my mum taught me. Whenever you're doing something that has stuffing, if you do your knot and then put it through the stuffing, pull it really tight and snip it as close as you can, you get a really nice neat finish with no loose threads that gets lost in the stuffing. So my creepy kitty has the loose needle that and in the beginning video she's sort of sewing so I decided to leave that there and then she just needs some eyes so for some eyes I just picked two buttons there we go and stitched those on and our creepy kitty is done it was a lot of work, but um, I'm really happy with how the jumpsuit came out and even the little, the little voodoo doll. So cute. So I hope you liked the video. Here are some of the final shots of our creepy kitty with her voodoo doll. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give it a like if you liked it. And, subscribe makes me very very happy and then you can get an alert for the next creepy kitty video i hope you enjoyed it bye